go over to Seoul and, and start our season. Now come back and um, you know we had a good spring training, got a lot accomplished, but no place like home. And you know you get back and you know you got only a chance to enjoy the beautiful city. But then um, I had a really great opportunity. We got in after getting in later that night, walking out here and. Um, Showing Graham Pauly around and have the opportunity to walk out and like look at the, you know, what's an amazing stadium. So uh, it's good to be here. Before we get into the baseball stuff, obviously, Peter Seidler's celebration of life. How meaningful was that for you and the players uh, to, to be a part of that? Yeah, I'm glad you asked about that. You know, we had a great opportunity to celebrate Peter Seidler's life. On Saturday, I thought the ceremony was really well done. You know, we actually still talking about it today. And what was, um, one of the biggest tributes from some of the staff, including myself's takeaway from the ceremony, was the, the number of people that spoke about Peter rightfully, glowingly, from different lenses. And it just spoke to how humanly special this guy was. So it's a great um, celebration, and we're going to always continue to celebrate Peter during the season and beyond. As far as the baseball side goes, coming out of Korea, a lot of positives came out of that series. It could have very easily been 2-0. Great output from the bullpen, offensively a great approach. Some of the rookies did a fine job as well. What were the things that really stood out to you about coming out of that series? A lot to unpack from that series. There was a lot of, a lot of um, it's good baseball games. You know, we ended up splitting it. You know, clearly could have won two, and um, you know, but right in both of them. Um, the thing that impressed me the most was the collectiveness of just how competitive the group was. Not that I didn't think they were going to be competitive, but just to the level. I talked about after the second game, you know, that was an identity game for a lot of reasons because that was a tough one the day before. You know, hard fought, hard pitched, um, well played for the most part, had a break that didn't go our way. That's a life. That's the game. It's going to happen. Um, but it's really how you respond to things that ultimately are a true test of individuals and teams and showed up the next day and immediately announced our presence, um, got punched back, and just we just kept punching and getting after it. And so it was a... Uh, a day that you know everybody contributed in pretty much both games actually, um, but the spirit and how we competed and how we executed um, said a lot about the, the team and, and is, uh, is, a, is a very encouraging thing for the future. Dylan Cease going free today. How much are you looking forward to seeing him fire again? And where's that balance between getting his work in and uh, staying fresh for his next outing? Yeah, yeah, Dylan. Um, Obviously going to pitch today. We're excited. Got to pitch in the exhibition game. To his credit, showed up after the trade, and, you know, braved a long flight and came over and won the ball to pitch a couple innings in Seoul. Today, another exhibition game. You know, looking at the work, you know, four or five innings, you know, 70, 75 pitches type deal, um, which does set him up to um, pitch in the Giant Series. Who's your take, starter a, take a trip like that to Korea to just have your guys with you for a long, suspended period of time. What can that do to get together in this chemistry, just having everybody kind of in one place and maybe the different distractions, not the same type of ones you're used to? Yeah, you know what? The Seoul trip was good for a lot of reasons. First of all, we had a really good Peoria spring training where, you know, we talk about togetherness a lot. The group um, got closer during our spring training. Um, you could feel it on a on, on pretty much a daily basis. Um, but then you go to Seoul and there's a next level of togetherness, you know, long plane ride, um, you know, different country, not a foreign country because we have some guys who are from there. Um, so the opportunity to get together with some really pleasant distractions in a sense of, you know, we got a chance to share our game globally. So that was great, but we had that experience to do that together. And then there was some good opportunities for the group to get together off the field as well. Um, you know, Kim was and his family were tremendous hosts to us, as well as Chan Ho Park, which allowed for some some opportunity for us to get together and just enjoy some some off the field time, which obviously always you know can lead to a good team camaraderie. Mike, who's starting Thursday? You Darvish. Okay. Yeah, you Darvish. Staying on turn. Simple as yeah, that. Yeah, simple as that. You know, he um he pitched the opening in the uh, Soul Series against LA and. Joe will throw game two, Cecil will go game three, and King will go game four. See, how's Manny's throwing going, and how do you see that progressing? Uh, Manny's throwing's going well. Um, he's just started, as we talked about prior to going to Seoul. Him getting, first of all, he feels great. He's not. He's recovering well offensively. That was the primary um, goal, you know, to make sure he was not only getting at bats, which he was able to do effectively. That's a big three-run homer to salt the game away the other day, um, but also to make sure he's recovering well. 
And once you're doing those things, taking us a pass, getting the volume he needs offensively, recovering well, now we progress. And we talked about being on track to do that when we got home. And he played catch yesterday, and, and um, everything ball reports went well yesterday. I haven't heard how he recovered today, um, but he's now coupling both, getting his volume of swings in, now reducing some extra volume with his throwing. And so that progression has taken place. And, you know, not to put a timetable on it, but, you know, loosely based, it's looking like a couple weeks of ramp up for him to be able to throw and do both and see where we're at. Uh, great spring training, um, not an you know, easy decision. We had a lot of competition for, you know, there for a while, our fourth and fifth spots before we got Dylan in, in the mix. Um, and so, you know, we had a lot of competition there between Vasquez and Brito and um, Avila and, of course, Waldron. And, you know, he just he just really pitched well. The other, It was more about how he pitched well than the other guys not doing as well because the other guys performed well also. So it um, creates an opportunity for him to get that start. Vasquez, Brito, and uh, Avila, do they stay here in the bullpen? Do they go to AAA? Yeah, no, we'll, um, we got all the guys here through the exhibition games today and tomorrow, and we'll announce our final roster in the next couple of days. How do you feel about the rotation in general and your ability to fill innings as organizational depth is going to come here to play? Do you feel better about it after the spring training? Yeah, well, I mean, listen, we feel good about it in spring training. Um, we like the guys we acquired in the trade. We liked our, obviously, Darvish and you, and, of course, King pitched really well, and, Mentioned, you know, Waldron obviously securing a spot. Avila pitched well for us last year. You know, we knew he had Brito Vasquez in the mix. Um, once you had Dylan Cease, a guy that's, you know, led baseball and innings pitch, that's huge for our club, huge for our starting rotation. And now you're talking about, you know, the two frontline guys and Joe and, and, and you. Um, mixed with Cease and now King is throwing the ball really well. Um, we feel really strong about our rotation. Jackson Merrill's in some pretty rare air starting in the outfield. Could you speak to the character of someone that age and being put in a position like this? Yeah, it's um, it's really hard to actually um, compute, really. I mean, he's done something that's, you know, pretty historic, actually. Not only, you know, one of three people to have done what he's done, one of them was in Seoul, Mr. Griffey Jr., which I think was cool, and it was nice to see them interact. So that was like a, you know, a nice moment. Um, you know, so beyond that, you know, at least he's a special young man. I'd recognize that a couple years ago when I met him. You know, he continues to have that hunger to continue to improve. He's clearly got talent, but he's also uses every day and other people's experiences to grow from. And um, he's ready for the opportunity.